Uh, we are going to be showing you some Irish stencils today, but also showing you a technique or a sign making um, type of thing that you may not have seen before. So we're going to be doing a reverse canvas uh, sign today. So I've just got this ordinary canvas that I picked up in a thrift store. Yes, they have canvases in thrift stores sometimes and I'll just grab those, especially if they've got this nice wooden, I don't know if you can see that, they've got a nice wooden uh, frame. So I don't like the MDF frames because they're not really suitable they, uh, because I want to showcase that wood um, on the reverse of the canvas. So I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. We'll also be using a uh, plywood board to do another sign and we'll be doing the Irish blessing on that sign so that's going to be fun and I was thinking I might add some gold maybe do some shadowing techniques so stay tuned and uh, let me know where you're watching from how's the weather in your neck of the woods it is steamy hot and humid here in Australia because we're in the middle of our summer so all right let's get started on our project now what I want to do for our reverse canvas sign today if you haven't seen that before oh there goes the dog on one of her toys it's a little puzzle so it's making a bit of noise in the background go Olive all right I, I painted Olive's crate last week and she loves her toy crate so if you missed that that was also green but we're talking Irish today I don't know for some reason green is the color you do when you do Irish things so I wanted to show you, um, first of all, the one that we're going to use today is Irish Coffee, which has some cute stencils in it. It's a mini, um, this is the six by six inch stencils, three pack. <clears throat> and it has in it the gorgeous Irish Coffee served here sign. Who can tell me what does Irish Coffee have in it that makes it Irish? What is the Irish Coffee known for? I feel like it's got I don't know, maybe some whiskey or something in it. Is that what it is? Let me know in the comments because I really have no idea. I didn't have time to look up that. Uh, then we've got top of the morning to ya. Did I do that right? Where's my Irish people? Is there any Irish watchers here online? It's maybe you're Irish American. So you can grab all of these stencils via using my code. I restore stuff and save 10%. Here's the other one. Lucky a latte. And here's our code, I restore stuff that saves you 10% on any of the stencils that we're using today. All right, so first of all, so we're making two signs today. I just wanted to show you one more. Now this, I think it came out last year or the year before, but there are still, if you're wanting to do the Irish thing and Irish decor, ready for March 17th, isn't it, right? St. Patrick's Day. Um, yes, you can order separate stencils, Maggie, correct. So the, the uh, spring bundle, you will be able to order the stencils separately and transfers guys beautiful spring transfers there's a spring vintage truck and there's a spring honey bee with a little honey jar stencil so if you didn't see the sneak peek go and have a look at that um, if you didn't get your email go check your emails you might have seen that all right so this is a stencil set of six pack of Irish signs it's called the luckiest so if you did want this set also, that's another set that is still available. And this one is on sale. So I won't be using that one today, but I just wanted to mention it while we're doing Irish things. If you wanted to decorate for Irish uh, themed St. Patrick's Day stuff, it's got a gorgeous um, four leaf clover with buffalo check. It's got the luckiest. It's got a jar filled with four leaf clovers, six different designs there. You can go check out that. And don't forget, use my code, I restore stuff, get you 10% off. All right, let's have a look. I'll point you down here and we'll get started on our project because what we're going to do is a reverse canvas and we're going to be taking apart just an ordinary canvas that I found at a thrift store. This one it was a dollar and I don't know what the size of it is, but our stencils are six by six inches. So I feel like this is, this is like eight, an eight inch um, frame. So what you need to do is make sure that your stencils will fit and they will fit right behind um, right in here uh, because that's the size that we're going to need to do our, our um, stencil. So what I want to do is grab my staple remover. So if you don't have one of these, I did put in the description of my live um, a staple remover. You can get these on Amazon at your local hardware store. Now it's not your normal staple remover 
that you get that you use for paper it's actually an upholstery one so you just whoop, you just wriggle the end of it underneath the staple and remove it like so so we're going to be removing all those you can see that I've half removed now sometimes you don't get it all out and so just grab another tool which is I believe well we call it in Australia a pincer and it just rocks and rolls on here to just rock and roll <laughs> it just pulls the staple out so just be careful where you put those make sure it's in a safe place um, so again just wriggling under the end of the stencil then I jiggle it across and then just gently lift sorry I can't zoom you in on that but here's how the staple remover works so have you ever tried this have you ever tried this reverse canvas so I'm removing the canvas I am going to use the canvas uh, for this sign but I want to feature this nice wood frame at the front of my canvas and not at the back or well actually it is at the back the back of my I want to feature the frame at the front the canvas at the back <laughs> you will see what I mean all right so see how I've just removed that frame and this is very rough because usually it's hidden behind this this one actually has a beveled edge you can see that little beveling and it's, so it's indented there so I'm going to be using that frame and it's quite rustic it probably could do with a little bit of sandpaper here and it does have a staple right here on each of these corners so I could sort of remove that staple and put it to the back or something but you could also use the back of the frame but it does have my staple holes all featured on there so I think I like that front part so the reverse canvas idea is we cut out the canvas to fit on the back of the frame and we're going to be stenciling in there so what I want to do is I want to stain the frame and I also want to paint my canvas so I'm going to lay that out there I could just cut it now but I think I'll paint it first and then we'll cut it okay so you're following so far I'm going to do green today since we're doing Irish coffee I will use the fusion mineral paint color carriage house and it's a nice you'll see the color green that it is when I paint it on <clears throat> oh. and it's only a tester size the fusion mineral paint does come in other sizes I'm going to place that face down so it sticks to that cardboard because I really I probably don't need it into the in the lid but all right I did have some brushes and luckily I brought my little smaller brush that fits in here so I'm going to just paint this straight on to the canvas and it doesn't matter if I don't go right to these edges because our frame fits here like that so I don't have to go right to the edges I just have to go um, to I'll, I'll outline it how about that just have to go to where the frame goes to now with most uh, this is a furniture paint fusion and so you can um, ask me for the, my Fusion affiliate link and I've got that if you don't have a retailer close to you <clears throat> if you wanted this color it's called carriage house and that really covers really well very well with just one coat so I may only need one coat for this sign if I was doing a piece of furniture I always do too but since it's a, a sign oh look there seems to be a little bubble in my maybe it's just standing out a little bit because of the um, because of the video sometimes does that <clears throat> yeah Beth the fusion sample or tester sizes are really a great way to try out the colors and uh, they're also great for painting out a swatch but they're perfect for stenciling because they actually fit your stencil brush in there as well and um, they're great for smaller projects and stenciling you really as you know if you have stenciled here before you don't need a lot of paint on your brush so I think we'll be good with that I'm just going to pop my brush just in case we need to do a second coat another time we'll put that into a little plastic bag it is a pretty color yeah it's just like a it's almost like a eucalypt kind of a color but uh, <clears throat> maybe a little bit brighter okay so we'll set that aside to dry I do have my hair dry if we need to dry it off a bit more and let's get painting on the frame which I'm just going to stain with 
a water-based stain, which is a walnut sort of colour. Um, Jenny's asking, what is fusion paint? It's fusion mineral paint is a um, acrylic-based paint that is used, usually used for furniture, specifically made for furniture. And it adheres really well so that you don't have to sand back your furniture to raw wood. You can just, um, you know, sand it back or scuff sand it a little. Here's the stencil set we're going to be using. If you've just joined us, we are using the Irish coffee stencil, but I'm showing you how to create a reverse canvas frame. So we do see the staples on here, which ideally they would be nice if they were on the back, but uh, they're not. And so I'm going to just get a little bit of stain. This is an Australian brand of stain and it's a walnut colour. So I'm just painting that on. Sometimes I like to use my stains with a um, user applicator, like a, a, what do you call that, microfiber applicator. But for this case, I'm just going to brush it on to get a little bit more of a darker coverage. The male guy. Um, Olive, come, settle. Olive, settle. I have to find her a little bit more of a exciting. It's just so loud and no one's here to help me today. So usually either Marty or Tori might be at home, but not today. Pending for ourselves, aren't we, Olive? So I'm just brushing on this walnut stain. <clears throat> and you can see the difference in the colour. So there's the top of the frame and there are the sides. And it's a nice, I like this colour brown. This is our Australian brand of uh, stain and seal. It's an artisan brand. So if you're on my page, you can get that in Australia from my website, irisstorestuff.com and any of the fusion mineral paint products. So if you're in Australia and you're watching on my page, my I Restore Stuff page. It's so funny, I should mention this. Um, it's just a funny anecdote. Because we are doing some Irish stencils today, um, you know sometimes Facebook does those automatic captions and I don't know if it did it today, but it's hilarious because I would look back at my live afterwards and when I say I'm Sharon from I Restore Stuff, the captions reads I'm Sharon from Irish Store Stuff. So it says Irish Store. So people probably think this is an Irish store. No, I Restore Stuff. So I don't know if my, my um, English, my accent wasn't as accurate or something, but I found that quite hilarious. Um, yes, the frame. I think, Colleen, the frame will look good with that green. So that'll be great. So I sometimes we'll just wipe a stain on, but this, in this case I brushed it on just to give a little bit more depth to the colour. So we'll allow that to dry. And then that frame is going to sit uh, on top so that we've got uh, sort of reversing the canvas here. So let me just grab my hair dryer. We'll dry that off a little bit. Oop, I don't have it plugged in. Actually, before we do that, I might just go on to, here's our second sign that we'll be using today. We'll be stenciling this one in a minute. So I've just pre-painted this board with just a white paint and it's very rough and rustic. It's actually a plywood board. And the size, you're going to ask me, what's the size of it? Well, let's see, the stencil here is 10 inches by 12. So I'd say my board is not really it's maybe eight inches but it still fits the stencil wording in on the board just it only just fits it's right to the edge but I had this board and you know if you know me I just look for things that I can work with so uh, then the it's 12 inches across and so it's probably 11 inches the board is 11 inches but when I place my stencil down on here and this is the Irish blessing so Look at that. May your blessings be out. Uh, no, may, may your blessings. Let's see if I can put on my Irish accent. <clears throat> may your blessings outnumber the shamrocks that grow and may trouble avoid you wherever you go. Did I do okay? <laughs> so we're going to do this stencil today and it just fits on my board. Let's see. I can't tape it down because it goes, extends outside the edges. 
Um, <clears throat> so if you haven't purchased this one yet, do use my code iRestoreStuff at the checkout to get your iris stencils. It does fit perfect, Donna. Thanks, Jenny says good accent. All right, I did okay. All right, so I could use that carriage house uh, again, or I could use a different green. We've got this manor green. Let me see if there's enough good. It's, some of these are running low. So I'll see if I've got enough. I should have enough for a stencil though. So what I'm gonna do is do the whole thing. And then I thought I could maybe just pop out something maybe by a little bit of extra gold. I like to um, pop out the word blessing. Now up here, we've got a three leaf clover and up down here is a four leaf clover. So I might stand out the word blessing and I'll stand out the, the four leaf clover there. Okay, just peeling off some paint at the, at the outside of my lid. It's a messy job painting, it's a messy job. Now I just need my stencil brush. So I'm just using, I could use the three quarter one or I could go for even smaller, a half inch brush. Actually it doesn't really matter because when you're doing lots of words, even though it's smaller and narrower font, you've got some bigger areas but also you cover a lot more in my swirly method that I use. Now, oops, we are getting to the bottom of the barrel now. I've got it all over the side of my brush. Now, when we dip our paintbrush in, my top tip is to offload the brush as much as you can and work that into the bristles. Jenny, you've never stenciled where the stencil's larger than your surface. Yeah, so you can tape it down, but I just have to use my hand here and hold that down really steady. And I'm going from the top, working the way down to the bottom. You can do it any which way you like. Start from the bottom if you like. Start from the middle if you like just as long as you get all the surfaces covered. Now I've got most of the paint off my brush by offloading it. So if you're new to stenciling, that is the key, is offloading as much as you can off the brush and onto just a flat surface. And now I'm gonna go back in, add a bit more paint. It's better to work in small, small areas rather than, um, <clears throat> rather than have too much on your brush because having too much on your brush, you can actually get the bleeding underneath the stencil and that creates all sorts of fuzzy edges for your lettering. So let's just dip that in again, trying not to hit my edges. Someone said stenciling can be addicting. It can. And um, I started out uh, my Irish store stuff business as my Irish store stuff, my Irish store stuff business as a furniture painter. And now I've added sign making to my repertoire and love the stencils and transfers that we get from Essential Stencil to use. And so, um, yeah, I think that furniture painting can be addictive. So if you haven't tried furniture painting before, there is lots of great tips and tutorials over on my blog. And especially at this time of year, at the start of a new year, we get a lot of people who are keen to just update the, their own furniture in their home. They're not necessarily wanting to go out and buy new furniture. And so uh, I get a lot of customers who are wanting to paint their furniture and wanting to know how they can do that. Well, I've got lots of tips and where to start and where to begin right there on my website. And just click through the different menu tabs to find out where to start. Shannon, you love restoring furniture as well. That's awesome. Uh, what green is this? I don't think I mentioned it, did I? This is manor green, manor green. Well, now the dog wants to go outside. She's just causing all sorts of di uh, distractions for me today. <clears throat> all right. The Irish blessing. It's actually a lovely blessing, isn't it? So getting that, uh, oops, I've still got another little bit of green right here. So I'll just pick that up and rub that into my brush. She has finished that long lasting chew in a matter of minutes. The dog I'm talking about. I gave her a roo chew, which is a kangaroo tendon, I think, and it sounds disgusting, but the dogs 
The dogs love them. Jenny says, it's the same way, you love to do a little bit of everything. They are just like our children. <laughs> Someone mentioned the dogs. Oh, it's like having a toddler again. So, mummy, mummy, I want to go outside. Mummy, mummy, I want to eat some food. <laughs> okay, so we are getting close to the end here, and then I'm going to decide. So, I'm using this green as the background, and then I want to add a little bit of. I thought of even using gold sizing. Have you used that before for stenciling? So, I have um, used it on another stenciling project, and I'd be happy to show it here again. And it's um, fun to use, and I just have to. I can't even remember what the stencil is that I did. I think it was like a honeybee stencil that I did some gold sizing on. So it's little gold pieces of foil that just you put on a sizing medium, which is like a clear liquid, and you add that to your bay to the um, surface. And then you lay down a gold leaf, like a really fine, fine sheet of gold. And it sticks to the sizing stuff. Donna says, I'd love to see that technique, please. Yeah, so I do have it out here on the table, just in case. I do have some gold paint. You could use gold paint if you didn't want to use the sizing. I might use a bit of both for different things. Let's see how it goes. <clears throat> the tricky thing is trying to get that sizing medium to use that um, using a stencil brush. Okay, almost done. We will let this dry. We'll go back to our other project in a minute and then we'll come back to this one and <coughs> Let's see, I may, mm, oh, that's nice and sharp. Let's have a look. Wipe the edge of my brush. Probably won't use that color again, unless, so you can um, close in your bridges using our detail brushes if you wanted to. Oops, didn't bring a brush cleaner. Or a of water. I'll just hold that up so you can see the nice crisp edges because we uh, used a very dry brush. So you just, I mean obviously the brush still has paint on it, but we call it a dry brush because you're drying off it the most, you know, as much paint as you can um, before you <coughs> before you stencil. And then it, that stops you getting the bleeding under and the fuzzy edges. Okay, so let's have a look at this uh, here. We're going to be using the, let's do Irish coffee. So our Irish coffee stencil comes with um, another couple of stencils. Top of the morning to you and lucky a latte. And excuse me while I just open this door for the dog. Let her out. And um, so we want to be making sure that's the right way around and I'll be using a white color for this one, okay? Because we want to use a contrasting color to that nice green there, but see how our frame is going to sit there and we'll cut off our edges. But just to give me an extra little bit of space, I'm just going to place that right in the center. <coughs> um, and you could tape it also. I'll be using white. And a, you can use a small brush. Now this one, I will have to tape the edges actually because, oh, where's our tape? Here it is. Let me show you. On some of the stencils, they go a little close to the edge. We're tr you know, trying to fit in as much of the design as we can in the stencil space we have. So see how this little clover is really close to the edge on both of these sides, maybe even here. You risk getting your brush over the edge and coming off the edge. So we want to tape some of those areas there so that they're not going to, so the paint doesn't come off the edge. Okay, so we will tape. And sometimes I like to do this. If I have just painted a surface and I don't want the paint to come off, I'll just um, 
make it not as tacky and sometimes you can do that by just putting it on your skin or on some fabric. So then we want to just tape right where that clover is so that it doesn't come off the edge. <clears throat> yes, yeah, someone, um, thanks Tracy for answering that. Someone must have asked about how many times you can use the stencils. You can use them over and over again. They are really top quality stencils. They're not single use stencils. So you really are investing in some great craft products when you purchase um, from Essential Stencil because they are quite thick mylar. So you just clean them off with some uh, detergent and a little bit of a rub down with a cloth. Some people use Awesome Spray, um, others don't clean them. So it's up to you whether you want to uh, keep them clean for next use. Um, but over time, if you're using them a lot, the, the paint does build up a little bit on the sides. This is just one of Fusion Mineral Paints Brightest Whites. You can use any acrylic based uh, paint for, it just has to be a good quality craft paint, acrylic paint for stenciling. Okay, so here we go with our stencil brush. Nice, uh, it's dry because I've offloaded a lot of the paint on here. I actually got a lot of paint on my brush so I had to maybe ah. make sure that that was all dried off. Look, she just needs to settle down, that little dog. <laughs> oh, I've got it quite close to the edge here too. I'll have to just be careful that I don't go over. And this is canvas that we are painting onto. And so yes, you can paint any of the signs. I will get a bit of tape to do that because it's just getting a little bit close to the edge. And there's nothing worse than having a little speckled bit of white off the edge of your um, stencil when you don't want it there. And the other side is the same because we've got that same flourish over this side. So here we go. Thank you so much for all your hearts. I can see them flying up the screen. Um, yes, you can use them over and over. Colleen, you love the clovers, aren't they gorgeous? Okay, so I've got a little bit more of a blob of white paint here. I'll grab some more, then offload it on the brush, and then I can go over that nice and boldly. On different surfaces, uh, it sometimes takes a little bit more, and depending on the paint and the surface really, is how your stencil might turn out. I'm kind of going a little bit all over the place, doing some of the bottom here. Little clover. Sometimes I just stomp and wiggle the brush. Pounce and wiggle, I guess you could call that. When we've got a line, like this little line here, I sometimes we'll go back and forth. Uh, so sometimes flat wood is a little bit different to stenciling on a canvas where you've got tiny little, um, it's a little bit of a textured surface. So you can maybe have a little bit more paint on the brush, but just not too much. If you're in doubt and if you're worried and scared about stenciling, I strongly suggest to practice first. And you could even literally practice on an old canvas. I got this for $1 just from a thrift store, and maybe your thrift stores have them even cheaper, but you can even get really cheap canvases from, um, you know, your craft stores have canvases. And so you probably maybe even have an old canvas lying around the house that you can just paint over and practice on that texture or on that surface. So have a good practice before you go, before you paint on your, you know, your nice special one that you're gonna do for good. <clears throat> a little bit more on the brush. Yes, someone's saying the me metallic gold would be fun on this. Hey guys, don't forget to join in the conversation for a chance to win $20 gift vouchers from Essential Stencil. At the end of our live, we'll be drawing winners. Here's our Irish coffee. Who celebrates St. Patrick's Day here? Let us know in the comments. What do you do? Do you put a little bit of decor up around the house? Do you wear green? Some fun ideas I'd love to hear. 
We have a lot of Irish people in Australia, so it's a fun day to celebrate over here as well. All right, let's see. I think I've got that done. Got it all covered. You pop this uh, white brush, let's see, in a plastic bag, the white sten the stencil that it, brush that I've used white on, because I may need to use that for something else. Not sure yet. Let's peel that off, making sure that it hasn't stuck too much to our edges. And there is my canvas with Irish coffee on it, so we've got nice crisp edges there. Now all we need to do is cut the edges to fit our frame. So I want to make sure it's in the centre. So I am just going to base it on the lines that are already here. So you can see where it's bent over the top of the frame. <coughs> Let's have a little look again. And see where it's bent over the top of the frame. So I'm going to go into where that is and just try and go straight as I can. I could use a pen, don't have one here. We're just going to wing it. Sharon's way, winging it. And we'll get it as straight as we can once we get it in the frame. So now we're just cutting the canvas to fit in our frame. Who likes this idea? Have you tried it yet? <coughs> there you go. So these are available on Essential Stencils website, essentialstencil.com. I've got the links right there in our pinned comment. The Irish blessing sign and then we've got in our description of our live we've got all the other links you need from anything in today's project including um, the my Amazon affiliate link where I've got a bit of a shopping list of supplies that I use for you know it's even got canvases there you can find on Amazon or the staple remover that I just used you can find that on my on my uh, Amazon link that's in the description of the live. So our canvas now is ready to put our frame right here. Let's make sure that it's going to fit over the edge. I've got a little bit of a wood piece stuck to the back. So I've got to make sure that that fits right over the top. Once I've got it in the right place, I'm going to see if I can hold it there, turn it over, keep it in the right spot. Yeah, see it needs to go a little bit on the top. So I'm going to just trim that top so that it isn't so long hanging over the top. And then we're going to stretch it as much as we can to fit it into the frame. So if you missed the beginning, you'll see how we added this. We pulled apart the canvas and we're adding it right here. I can drop it down slightly. I'll hold it with my fingers, see if we fit it. So we see we're just trying to make sure that all those edges are in the right place. Turn it over and then I'm just going to use my staple gun. Now you can use a, um, a manual staple gun. This one's a bit like an automatic one. And I looked and I've only got like about three staples left. So it's going to be minimal stapling until I can get some more for my staple gun because I forgot to purchase some more. So once we've got one in, you come to the other end, the opposite end, and we pull that as tight as we can. So pull that and we'll staple here. This fits these mini stencils perfectly. So I'm just going again on one end and then pulling that super tight for this end. Could be on my last stencil uh, staple, I don't know. Then you can work your way up to the corner. I'll pull that tight again. Let's just put one there. I've still got staples left. I looked and I thought, I've only got like about four or five staples. So far we've done five. I need to get some more. There we are. We're on the last. That was the last one. There was only five staples left. So I'll have to do that when I get some more staples. But you get the idea. So there you go. A cute little Irish coffee served here. Um, great sign with this gorgeous green toned background. Doesn't have to be a bright green, does it, for St. Patrick's Day? It can be any kind of green, I think. Okay, so here's our stencil again. I was thinking of adding some sizing gold to this and maybe the word blessings. 
or we can use like a shadow kind of type of thing with the gold underneath it. <clears throat> let's see. I'm going to create a shadow look and let's see if we can do that with that sizing. So if you've not seen my shadowing technique before, we just place the stencil exactly over where it was before. And in the real world, we would have cleaned this off to make it perfectly clean before we stencil another color or something else on it. Then I'm going to move it slightly to the left or right, doesn't really matter, and then slightly up. So now I've got the placement of where I want to put my sizing on just here and just here. So I will, because the word blessing is close to other words, I'm going to reuse all this tape and just tape it across. I may need some more, but why get more tape when I've got it right here? Um, and then there. We will need some more tape across here because we've got these words here. And so you just tape the words that you don't want to have it on. You don't want your paint to go on. There we go. And right here beside this four leaf clover, because I'm going to leave that one green and we'll do gold on that one. Uh, let's see, anywhere else I might need to put that. Okay. Let's see. Now this is the gold sizing. I don't have a link for this, but you probably all you have to look for is gold metal leaf or gold size. It's called size. I don't know why they call it size, but that's what I've used. And this set here, I don't have a link for that, but you can find that um, probably in a number of craft places. <coughs> you reuse your tape too. I feel like a Scrooge when I'm re reusing my tape, but hey, why get some more if you don't? need to. Oh, I should have got a uh, something to dip this into, like a little jar or something. I don't even have a lid. Because okay. I've, it's in, oh, maybe I could take the whole lid off and just dip my brush in. Let's see if my brush will fit in the top of this. And that'll work. It's kind of a sticky kind of substance. So I want to get a little tiny brush that I can fit in there. The half inch will fit perfectly. Then I can still use a cardboard to offload. That one's getting a little bit full. I might use this one to just offload that onto. I've only done this once before and it kind of worked, but this is really thin. So I've got to really watch. And so we're different than the paint, which is quite thick. So I'm actually just sort of trying to offload this size, but it's very thin. So I know it's probably going to need a bit of pouncing instead of, um, and sort of coming in from those edges. So instead of swirling, I'm just sort of coming in the edges. Hopefully I've got it all there on the brush and it dries pretty quickly by the feel of it. And it should dry tacky. I didn't look up the instructions, but I'm pretty sure you just, yeah, it says allow to dry for 15 minutes or until the size becomes tacky. So we will see. Because we've got humid, dry weather here in Australia, let's just hope that it comes tacky pretty quickly. 15 minutes, we don't have that much time for the end of our life. And then the word blessing. We'll try that. Try the word blessing. Now this is see-through, it's clear, so you're not going to be able to see that it doesn't look like paint yet. Um, and we're going to add some gold metallic leaf on top of it. See, I can't even tell where I was up to. I'm going to come from this end. Hopefully it doesn't... Um, if it doesn't work out, I'll just use some gold paint, hey? All right, so there's my sizing. And the sizing is literally just on the blessing and on the... Oh, yeah, it's getting nice and tacky now just on cue, so it's called gold size. You can get this in other metals too, like copper, copper size, um, <coughs> silver. All right, so it comes, let me show you the, the leaves. I'm not sure if I should use it. No, I'll just remove the stencil because that's the idea of what, how I did it. And hope this works, guys. You know I experiment with you. You're all wonderful. 
Um, no, I don't know, but Wendy, I think you can buy them all separately because you may run out of, you know, you may run out of the gold before you finish using the size. And so there's lots of different brands of this available too. I don't have a link or anything. I'm not affiliated with any of the, either of the products. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure if they would come together in a set or not. <clears throat> so here's our sign and we can't see what we've done. I've just got some tacky size on my fingers. I'm going to see, see how this goes. I will have to pop this in a, a plastic because I've and I'll have to remember to wash that out really well. It is water-based, so it should just wash out with water. Um, I did bring some gold paint in case this fails and doesn't work. But it comes in these little sheets and they're all separated via some... Uh, oh, these are in plastic. So they're all separated by this little sheet of paper here. So I don't want to have any tacky on my fingers. Otherwise, I'm just trying to rub that off. <laughs> Sue says, can't wait to see the outcome. Me too, Sue. Same. <laughs> I'm always experimenting here. So we'll see. We'll see how it works out. So what you do need is a bit of a brush. So I'll just use one of our stencil brushes because once you've got the sizing on there, you brush away the gold makes a bit of a mess but hey hey does it matter we're here to make messes that's what crafting's all about um, so let's see here's our experiment here's if here's how it'll go let's see don't go anywhere because we're nearly we're going to finish this sometime soon and we will get some prize winners and we'll be notifying you here oh, let's see I'll lift up this one whoops there's no gold left in there lift up oh, I've used that one go to the next sheet that I've got. This one's got a bit of gold here and elsewhere. So sometimes you'll leave, you'll have some extras left over and you can, I think it's, it's folded over, it has. There we go, so I've got that there. Oops, still got some tacky gold. Oh dog, little olive, really? Okay, so it just, it honestly, it'll fly away if you're not careful, but it does fill the the end of the word blessing, oh no, maybe, it does fit the word blessing. So let me lie it down there really carefully and I'm going to go over that with my fingers and tap it all down exactly where the word blessing is. And remember we made a shadow with it too, so you could just put your sizing directly onto the stencil, but I thought it'd be fun to see that pop of green around the outside so we'll see how that works then I'm going to just try and gently pull this away oh you can use the pieces so here I can literally put that piece of gold right there on on that and I'm going to just oh dear we're getting a lot of background olive here today so here we go I've put the size right there on the four leaf clover Tap it down, press it into your work, and then I'm going to just tear that away because it should be just tacky on the parts where where the clover is. And I'm going to put the rest back in here because I can use the rest of it another time. As long as that sheet doesn't go anywhere and the air conditioning is on and it's kind of making it blow. So just put that there because I can see a little bit of clover, although that could be where the shadow is. I don't know. Like I said, it can get messy. So what I'm going to do now, and I can see a little bit left over here, but again, that could be the shadow part. I just want to make sure I've got it on all of the parts where the sizing is. Here's the big reveal, folks. Are you ready for it? It could get messy. I'll just put out other, other painting aside. Oh, look, it's all happening here today. We've got the road sweeper out there now, which is a huge machine that's making lots of noise. So the gold is going to just fall off, and then you can sort of sweep it up and make it into little gold flakes. But... Let's see how that turned out with the word blessing. I'm just using my stencil brush, absolutely clean and absolutely dry. Olive, Olive, quiet. Yeah, she's just barking at everything. Oh, I've got my book on how to, how to get a good dog in 30 days. I've, I've still got to read it. <laughs> she has done puppy training, but they didn't teach us how to stop excessive barking. So I'm looking up all the videos. If you've got any great ones, let me know. Oh, this is looking great, guys. I'm really happy with how that turned out. So see how I just swirled the brush? And what the brush is doing is tip that all down here. 
We, it will make a bit of a mess. We'll just sweep that up with our dustpan and brush afterwards. Oh, I like how that turned out. So if you've never used size and gold leaf on your stencils before, look at that. And you can see the shadow. So see where I shifted it slightly across and slightly up and it creates the shadow there. What do you think of that? Pretty and shining. So here we go with the clover, four leaf clover. Again, I'm just going to <coughs> uh, brush the sizing off the, the clover, brush it off. And we've got all those big, see those big chunks of gold flakes? You can pick up those up and use them again for other projects. So that gets the, the excess off. So we just brush that off there. But we can't see the detail yet. So see, we've got the excess off. But we now have to just give it a little bit of a, a firmer, a firmer, um, a firmer pressing down to actually get all of the edges and the details. And it all depends on how you put the size on as to how that will turn out. So if you're a little bit excessive with your brush, see I can still see a little bridge right here that's, that hasn't come off. Um, but see, if, you're, if you have too much of that size on the brush, it's like having too much paint on your brush. It's gonna bleed underneath the edges. And so I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, yeah, we've got our little stem all looking great there. So there is our sizing and our Irish blessing. May your blessings outnumber the shamrocks that grow and may trouble avoid you wherever you go.